Today we have the Sunna 10U. The 10U is probably the most compatible Bluetooth uh, unit for your helmet. So they sell the 10U in many different kind of uh, varieties and they, each one is just different by the helmet that it's built for. So the most popular helmets are covered. Not all of them are covered, obviously. But um, you know the Sunna 20 series is going to be better, but the 10U is very custom. So you've got, um, I'll show as we unbox, but you've got the uh, unit here that sits, sits for you to control the Bluetooth audio. On the rear, you've got um, uh, antenna, and then you've got your your, your pieces here. Uh, one thing that I've heard complaints about is because of the way this unit here is designed, and it's going to be fitting, <clears throat> it's going to be fitting uh, here. It makes it difficult to close your visor, and more importantly, with the Shoei GT Air, you've got a really nice rubber seal here that makes it one of the most quietest uh, road helmets you can get. And because of that, it doesn't seal fully on closure. So we'll see how that, you know, how that looks in the real world. Let us begin. Now before, uh, well as I do this, so it looks like it has Bluetooth 4.1. I don't know if Invisible Beauty is actually a feature, but it has it. Uh, it has a handlebar remote, so you could uh, use that in place of the, uh, the helmet remote. Uh, the intercom goes for one mile or 1.6 kilometers. It supports four other um, riders to communicate. It has voice prompt support, an audio booster, advanced noise control, universal intercom, um, music sharing, and FM radio. And like all Sunna products, the firmware is upgradable, uh, which is iPhone and iPad. And it will obviously, um, the great thing about this is because it has Bluetooth 4.0, you can receive audio from many different devices. So you have your iPhone hooked up, which can be sending you um, uh, notification, email notifications or turn-by-turn -turn directions if you wanted that. You can also push a button and prompt you know, Siri to, uh, to do a task for you or to text someone or to call a friend. You can be jamming to the radio. You can be playing music on your iPhone or the iPad in your backpack. You can also be receiving audio from um, a sat-nav, a TomTom -tom or a Garmin. And then finally, you can be communicating with uh, with your friends that are all around you. So it's it's a lot can a lot of input devices can come into this at the same time without um, causing any problems. And obviously, it's it's you know there's going to be some issues if you have way too many devices. But if you have like a sat and have a phone and a friend, uh, you're you're good. So let's open this up. Oh wow, a lot of stuff in here. Okay, let's take this out in parts because there's going to be a lot to go over. All right, so this is, looks like the main system. So we have our, uh, our controller. Well, we have the whole thing in one unit. <laughs> Let's get this set up in sort of the way that it would be in the helmet. Okay, so we've got our control unit here that goes to, the, to our left side of our cheek. Uh, microphone here. Looks like an antenna that also goes inside of your helmet. You've got your two speakers. And then another antenna out the back here. Uh, what else comes with this thing? Ah, here is our handlebar remote. So you open this up, clamp on your helmet or your handlebar. You've got a, uh, a button for initiating control, it looks like. And then on the sides, this pops up maybe? Nope, that's uh, volume up, volume down, I believe. Oh, look at that. So uh, it's already charged. Awesome. And it's actually really nice. It has a really nice, and this is all aluminum here, um, soft texture. It feels really good, actually. This probably feels, you know, like it can sustain some, some serious beating. Uh, included here, this box is not very big for what you get. So let's just get all this stuff out of here. Instruction manual with stickers. Every uh, motorcycle and car company should include stickers with their stuff so I can then throw them away. Uh, if anyone wants any Cine stickers, let me know. So I'll probably be in a landfill somewhere. Uh, USB here for, I assume, charging. Yep, yeah, there's a USB port here. And where is the USB port? Oh, there it is. The piece that goes behind your head. It also has the USB port here. All this is uh, sealable, of course. So USB for charging. Uh, it looks like our ear pads for uh, replacement. Nope, these are ear pads, and then we got a replacement microphone. Looks like you get only one set of ear foamies. Uh, and then here are a couple other soft things that 
go somewhere. I'm just not quite sure where. Hmm, I don't know. Cable management, possibly. We'll go through the instructions. We'll figure it out. So the operation here, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and install this in the in the helmet. Uh, I will do a video how to do that. I would probably recommend that you guys watch another video because I've never uh, taken apart a helmet before. So no idea how this is going to go. It might go great. It might go horribly. So let's install the uh, the Senna 10U in the uh, Shui GT Air. Quick start guide is pretty simple. It gives you an idea of where all the um, charging ports are. I actually didn't research how long the each charge lasts, but I assume it's a uh, standard day of riding. Uh, installation looks pretty simple. And uh, yeah, charging looks like red is charging, blue is fully charged. It takes roughly three hours to charge. It only comes with one USB uh, cord, but each device charges the handlebar uh, piece and the helmet piece charge independently. So. I guess you get done riding at 9 p.m. You charge till 12, and then charge the helmet. Charge, you know, charge the handlebar first, then charge the helmet. I don't know. Uh, pairing looks like a standard Bluetooth. Uh, so a tap is one selection. Uh, I can't quite understand this, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, double tapping, press and hold. Oh, here we go. So tap the rear button to answer. Tap the rear button to end the phone call. Hold, no, tap the rear button for voice dial. Click the, uh, you, you double tap the rear button for speed dial, and you press two to reject a call. Uh, music operation on the joystick, uh, one tap for play pause, and then one tap to the, oh, push to the left, and then, uh, yeah, press to the left for play pause, Move left right on the joystick for next song. And it just goes on and on and on. There's a lot of instructions here, so I'm guessing it'll take a while to get used to this um, this configuration of all the buttons. You can factory reset uh, in the configuration menu. Okay. Well, let's uh let's cancel that sort of business. Let's get the helmet over here. Alright. So the visor up. Uh, the way I've seen this is you grab these tabs and you pull those, pull this piece out, pull this piece out, it pulls out as well, right? Yep. There we go. So we've pulled everything out on the inside. Uh, you'll see that the, the uh, headphone areas are open as well as well, I believe the rear is open enough here for, to get the other piece in. We'll, we'll see how this goes. So, here's the unit in its entirety. It's one piece. I did not pre-charge it, so uh, we'll have you forced to sort of charge it up later. I'm not quite sure how that will go yet. But um, this just goes like this. Wow, this is kind of appearing to me to be messing up the the helmet a bit actually. I guess it's in. I don't know how that degrades uh, the amount of noise that, um, that I'll hear, wind noise that I hear, but that's in now. So now we have, let's see if I can get this to the side. This is the right ear piece here. And it says, it looks like it's actually easier to take this piece off and place it in the right area there and then uh, put the connectors in a little bit easier that way. It has quite a bit of effort there, and you obviously you don't want to break it, but uh, quite a bit of effort to get that in. But it does appear that it's now uh, solid, and this supposedly goes along uh, the bottom here. All right, let's work on the other side. So I'm flipping her over. The other side's gonna be a little bit more complicated. We've got the other piece here that controls things. Yeah, I gotta say this is a little bit complicated because if you see here. We've got, um, ignore this obviously, we've got our, our piece up top going in for where you're going to push to talk, and then we've got our earpiece, and then this sort of has to come around and come under like this. So it's a little bit uh, complicated here, but we'll get it, we'll get it figured out. Okay, I guess you just got to do this one at a time. So basically you put the earpiece in place, then you put the, um, the mouthpiece up top in place, 
and then this on the bottom you'll see here this is angled up this is going to slide where this hole is over this plastic connector here and then we just slide this right into the helmet I believe it goes straight up yep straight up and then into place where it will not fall out so it's kind of locked into place it does say go at an angle okay so now same as before we're going to lock now we're going to do the uh, left earphone and then go up to the uh, push to talk controller left earphone will be same as the, the uh, right so now I see you just basically push so you push so the helmet's facing this orientation you put the um, the earphone in going straight up into the first connector which is a bit longer and then you push really hard down the bottom connector and it just snaps in place okay good snap it's not moving you a little bit of tug there it's there it's stuck so now we've got uh, if you look here we've got our antenna on the bottom and our helmet part or earpiece in the bottom <laughs> the, that part there um, I assume that this audio cable here is just going to sort of dangle a bit. Maybe we'll put it here so it's out of the way. I guess we could use the rear piece here as sort of a cable manager. There we go. That'll probably get the... So what we're seeing here is there's a little notch right here. Uh, my breath guard. I'm pretty sure it goes here. So I'm pretty sure it goes up there. So it'll be a little bit off to where you would normally breathe, off to the left. Um, we'll try it out and see if this works. I feel like this top hole here is going to get in the way when I read on my mouth guard. So I think it goes over here. So now if we close, so it's fully installed now, well, except for the head guard here. If we close this, it doesn't appear to get in the way of the seal, not that I can tell. I'm pretty sure that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and install the uh, head guard back here, the foam insert, and make sure everything uh, works well. Okay, now this thing is installed. Uh, I thought I would just talk about a couple of impressions. So when you look straight on at the helmet, uh, you've got this guy here sticking out um, pretty you know it's noticeable when you're talking up close to someone but uh, the buttons feel pretty good uh, mouth guard will go back on I had to order one because it didn't come with one because it's a uh, it was a demo demo unit uh, straight on everything looks normal underneath though you can certainly tell the centers there it's uh, it's noticeable and it even kind of you know cuts into a bit of the uh, the rubberized properties here. It, it 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 almost felt like I was morphing the helmet into something that's not supposed to be in order to have this installed. I would like to have something like this natively. Um, so that is that is in like that. Uh, charging port's pretty accessible to reach right here. And then on the side here, you guys can't really see in there. I mean the 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 cables themselves are pretty much completely um, invisible. Uh, you can't see them at all. I guess maybe you can see a small one back here. But um, you know, for the most part, it's it's pretty pretty hard to see. I'm gonna throw this thing on and see how it feels now that uh, now that that's installed. Feels fine. I might actually remove the audio pads. Not quite sure yet. Um, you know, this is pretty nice. Obviously, when you close the helmet, you can't access these guys. Um, you can reach back and feel, but at the same time, the seal itself isn't really compromised. Um, but I do think I'll remove those foam pads. I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to be in there, but maybe not. Everything else pretty much feels as it should. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to pair it with the, uh, with the uh, GoPro pack and uh, try to do some videos with the GoPro basically sitting down here. We'll see. All right, thanks for watching.